speaking to me when I meet a child that has the willingness to learn, the fortitude to challenge the status quo, and more importantly, a child who demands to be properly taught by those who chose to be educators. Our next speaker is a young lady who endured a level of abhorrence that a child should never have to endure, and only because she completed an assignment that she was told to complete. This talented young lady, who is well on her way to become a 21st century abolitionist, and is already a servant leader, ended her assignment with the following call to action. A grand price was paid in order for us to be where we are today. But in my mind, we should be a lot further. So again, I encourage the white teachers to instruct, and I encourage my people to not just be students, but to become learners. 13-year-old wrote that, or 13-year-old at the time. Her teachers and the school administrators, they chastised her, I don't know why, because they said that she offended them with her essay. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together very, very loudly and help me bring up to the stage, because she's a little bit nervous this evening, <laughs> Miss Jada Williams. everyone. I just want to share a few thoughts and then I will sit out. <laughs> Many of you here may or may not know my story. I will not go into full details at this time. Presently, I am still a little fragile about what happened and I choose not to recall the events that have transpired because of the pain that I have gone through and still try to continue to get through. I am actually in the stage of rebuilding my confidence and trying to learn from this experience so that I can pay it forward and be able to help or encourage someone else that may dare to write like me. I want to be in a position to assist them along their journey as several individuals are helping me along my journey. So if my memory serves me correct, we began to learn about government I would say maybe around fourth grade and on. We are taught in school specifically about the Constitution regarding freedom of speech. And we are also taught the Pledge of Allegiance. But with the Pledge, we are taught that much earlier on. The part of the Pledge that I want to bring to your attention is where it's recited and with liberty and justice for all. I mention these two things because when I actually went to exercise, the freedom of speech, which was so eloquently conveyed to me by many teachers and how they even went as far as to model what that looks like by showing examples. And with this, and liberty and justice for all, I believe I had the right, being actually born and raised in this land of the free and home of the brave. Again, here is a song taught to me in school that we were to sing and to be proud to be in America and in America that I could freely express myself. Apparently, that clearly wasn't the case. And all I did was share my school experience and what I have observed so far and was backlash by the Rochester City School District staff for doing what I was basically programmed to do. Learn, then model what I have learned. I'm sorry, but I was always under the impression that we attend school to actually learn, to be continuous learners in order to compete globally. That's right. That's right. That's right. So this incident made me view the educational system much differently. And believe you me, I began to question who I was, my purpose, and my being. Because my parents, and not only them, but some teachers too, have always told me that I was smart, that I was intelligent, and that I was a shining star. Then one day someone comes along and said that you, they are offended by my work, but yet makes copies of it and share it, and then some people label me as this angry child. 
for making an observation and writing about it. This was alarming. When my work was taken way out of context, it wasn't a good feeling searching for my identity. I began to wonder about these things that were drilled into me. Freedom of speech and liberty and justice for all, land of the free and home of the brave. Does these things even apply to me or was it written for certain individuals or certain people? So now I needed to know who these individuals were and who these certain group of people were because I am a U.S. citizen born and raised, so why wasn't I included? I was never informed about a disclaimer stating that freedom of speech and liberty and justice for all, land of the free, home of the brave, wasn't intended or entitled to me or anyone that remotely looks like me. Yes, I stand here confused. I do thank God for my parents and many other community members that did comprehend the message and that this was my story that I was bold enough to share. I want to especially thank the individuals that prayed for me because I know the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous come man availed much. I still welcome your prayers because I am still a student in the Rochester City School District and I am struggling with trust issues amongst my teachers. I'm afraid to write essays to my full potential and even now as I stand before you all, I am cautious as to what I say because these were adults that came to attack me. So I do not know who is for me or against me, but I do know prayer changes things. Come on, yeah. I would like to take the time to acknowledge a few people. So in closing, I have to give my sincerest gratitude to the Frederick Douglass Foundation for shedding light on my situation, for not allowing this injustice to die. So I am eternally grateful to the founder, Dr. Tim Johnson, to the president, Ms. Aisha Cruz, and her husband, Mr. Matt Cruz, and all the staff there. To Mr. Ernest Blacker, who is the president of Rochester Parents United, who was very supportive to my mother and myself by attending many meetings with us and rallying the community together on my behalf to Dr. Tabitha Baker for providing a strong support system for not only me, but my immediate family members as well. To Mrs. Trace Tracy Thickus, who is the best youth advocate of FDF ever and an awesome gatekeeper throughout my ordeal. As I see her, an honorary godmother, to Dr. Theodora Bonney for just being a great friend. To Dr. Joe Miller, my attorney, who has been working so diligently with my case and being so patient with me through the whole process. Words cannot express the sentiments of my heart towards him, trying to prove to me that I am included in this injustice for all. To Mr. Glenn Beck, who televised my interview, which can be seen nationally, he also contributed in starting a great personal library for me. To Dr. Albeda King, who has also encouraged me and said I could call her any time. To Mr. Howard Eagle, ever since he learned of the situation, has supported and advocated on my behalf and still is very active in my life presently. I view him as a mentor and I thank God for him and everyone I have mentioned thus far. Lastly, but definitely not least, my dear parents, John and Carla Williams, who have stuck with me, stuck by me. Who have stuck with me, stood by me, and been that driving force and support that I need in my life. I can stand here this evening and declare that I am truly blessed, truly a blessed young lady, and I am humble and grateful. I thank you all for your time, and if anyone here can answer any of those questions I mentioned earlier, I will welcome that conversation. Thank you. <laughs> Just because I wanted to 
see, there's a couple people here, Chairman Cox and a few others. I would love to have Jada to have a chance to um, just get a picture with you guys. Um, if you wouldn't mind, and Dr. Johnson and Carla and her parents, um, just, I want her to know that she is surrounded. Um, I also um, would not, yes, maybe, um, I also want to pray for her um, before she leaves. Uh, maybe Quavis, uh, if you'd be willing, or Pastor Peace, either one, to pray for her as she goes on this um, journey. She is an amazing, you know, what are you, 15 now? Yeah. <laughs> 15. So just trying to help her to move forward from this. Uh, anybody can help her in this. Uh, Rochester City School District has given her a hard time even now. And the things that she's been asking for are so minuscule. Uh, an apology. Just an apology she would settle for. So... Yeah, let's just pray for her real quickly, and then it wasn't planned, but I'm doing it, because she kept making me cry. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you that you will have placed in our lives someone that you knew from the beginning of time would be here for such a time as this. That you have raised up Jada for such a time as this. Even, even if she were born for adversity, Father, we ask that you give her the strength that you only can give her. We ask, Lord God, you continue to encourage her. Yes. Father, we stand as a community behind her yes. and with her. And we will not allow any any challenges to come her way without us having something to do with it. That's right. Because, Lord, we know that this is really about your work. It's a kingdom work. Yes. And so, Father, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. We ask that you manifest yourself as Jehovah Rolfe, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace. Yes. And give her that peace. And that she will also will be Jehovah Rolfe, the Lord God who heals. And you continue to heal her heart as you raise her up to be one of your lilies yes. of, of grace, one of your lilies of power, one of your lilies of love. And so, Father, we thank you for this, and we count it done yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. 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 Christ-centered, love, and a mom and dad who knows how to make it happen. 